During this video, we will install the Hyper-V virtualization role onto a Windows 2012 R2 server. In this video series, I am using Remote Desktop Connection Manager and a VPN connection to remote into a server that I have on campus. Now, this server's been highly upgraded. This is an HP DL380 ProLiant server. I've upgraded it with solid state drives and it has 64 gigs of RAM. So, although you may not have a machine with this much processing power, um, as you can see, it's got Server 2012 R2 installed on it. And we're gonna go ahead and build an Active Directory domain utilizing virtual machines on this server. So I've got the base server operating system installed. That's all that's installed and I'm ready to install Hyper-V. So the first thing I need to do is go into server manager here and I'm gonna make that big. And I need to install the Hyper-V role. So I've installed the base. I've done all of the system updates. These will go away in a minute. These error messages, just be patient. And I'll go into manage. I'm going to add roles and features, and this brings up the add roles and features wizard. I'm going to choose next. It will be a role-based and feature-based installation on this machine, so I'm not doing a remote desktop services installation, so I'll choose next. Here's my machine. This is Eric's base server. Again, I'm going to build the whole Active Directory on this base server, so I'm not going to utilize the base server in my Active Directory environment. I'll select this server. By default, it's the only server, so I'll choose Next. And then I'm going to come down here and choose Hyper-V. So I'm going to install the Hyper-V and all of the roles. So I'm not doing anything unique here. I'm just walking through the basic installation process. I'll choose Next. It's going to want to install the .NET framework and any other supporting features that it needs, user interfaces, SMB, remote server administration tools, etc. PowerShell, great deal. We'll do some videos on PowerShell in the future, and I'll choose Next. At this point, before I install, identify network connections. Yes, I know everything's running. I'll choose Next. Create virtual switches. So at this point, I'm just going to choose Next. Allow the server to send and receive live migrations. I'll say Yes if I want. Use credentials. Sure. Next. Here's where Hyper-V is going to be installed, next. And if there's a restart, which I know there is, I'll choose next and install. It'll go ahead and do the installation of the Hyper-V role onto the server. When it's done, it is going to go ahead and want to restart. So I'm going to pause this video when it gets close to requiring that restart. All right, so my server has successfully restarted finished complete installation of the Hyper-V module for PowerShell, the Hyper-V GUI tools, etc. And if you notice, it says right here, installation succeeded. So at this point, I'll just close that. There also is another notification up here that tells me the same thing. Look, it succeeded. So I'll close that so that my notification center is clear. And at this point, I'm ready to start Hyper-V. Now, if you notice, there's a Hyper-V section right here that will list the information. A few errors I might want to deal with. The easiest way to start Hyper-V, I just come down to the windows and start typing Hyper till I get the Hyper-V manager tool. So I just open up the Hyper-V management tool and this is where we're going to go ahead and in the next video install our very first virtual machine. Now this works folks on either Windows 10 or on a server as I've demonstrated here. Take care.